In this statistics video we're going to have a quick look at computing the one way between groups analysis of variance in R and following up with post hoc tests. Now the one, the one way ANOVA is for when, when you've got more, more than two groups that you've um, manip manipulated manipulated something about each one of those groups and you, you want to see if, if they all differ on one on one outcome variable wh wh which ones differ and wh which ones don't. Now this is kind of similar and actually it uses the same mathematical logic to the independent samples t-test we looked we looked at in a previous video but it, it, it just applies to more than one group so let, let's go ahead and take a look at our example I've got R open down here and we can see here that we've got a, we've got a fictitious study where we've got we, we've got um, three, three groups we've measured one that's a control group and we've just asked for a rating of their happiness we've not done anything to them we've got one which is a ne ne neglect correction group which th this is but basically correcting for good things that they might neglect them neglecting their life so we'd expect it to make them happier and then an impact bias correction which is basically the idea that well, well when a when a when a good event happens you're t you're you're, t you're too focused on it and you uh, over predict how long that's gonna last for in your life so that should that should make them um not as happy but we need but we need to we need we need to test that statistically yeah? Uh, like I say, if it was just two groups, we could use a t test, but um, because we've got three or more than two groups, we need to use an ANOVA. Now um, we should know how 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 the data are laid out. So because because this is an <coughs> independent design, we've got this is in what's called a wide format, where we've got a grouping variable uh, uh, for each participant, and then the participant sc score on another variable so with all that said what do we what do we actually need to do in R? well the first thing you should do is get, get descriptive statistics so means and standard deviations for and variances for each each of our groups so we can look at the means before we um, run our test so we know what the test the tests are actually comparing um, in order to do that, we need to add on an extra package to I. If you haven't seen the video I did on packages, there are basically ways you can add in extra extra functionality to R. And the the ANOVA itself is actually built into R, but to get the descriptive statistics we need, we we um, want to install a separate package. So I'm just going to say install dot packages. And then the package runner install is past.ecs. So if we run that, the, the, it'll it'll download and install, and we we'll see here is where it's put our package. Now, in order to use a package, we need to load it so to do that I'm just going to say library library past ECS so okay how do we actually get the means and standard deviations. Now, that, now that we've got that package, well, t if we were if we wanted to get them all, we could just y use something straight, a function straight from the past or ECS package. But we um, we we've got three groups, and we, we want to look at the means separately for our three groups because that's what we compared. So to run a function separately in, on different groups of data, we can use what's called the by function that's built into our and first, first thing I want to say is what 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 data we do on display. Well, we want we want the um, we want descriptors for the happiness variable that's in the data frame um, called data. So we write that as 
data happiness. So the first, the first argument you want to give it is what 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 data do you want to display, and the second argument you want to give it is what how what do you want to split these based on? Well, we want just mm, different descriptors for each group, so we want to split them based on groups. So we're going to say data. Group, and then this this function, all it does is arbitrary runs, arbitrary runs a function split across those groups. So we're going to use it for another function later. But the what we actually want to use to get the descriptives is uh, the stat describe function. So t t to us for that, we're just going to say function equals. That dot describe, and we see we've got the we've got labels here. And we've got the different data points for all our our, our groups. So we've got means, we've got medians, we've got uh, standard deviations. And if we look at if we look at those, it certainly looks like um, the 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 con control condition kind of. Has the most normal mean than the than the neglect correction condition is a lot higher as we expected, and the um, impact bias condition is a lot lower than both of them. So we we kind of got the results we expected here, um, but but again we want to test if those differences occurred by chance or whether it is actually um, statistically speaking um, unlikely to observe that data. If the null hypothesis had been true, so in order to test that, we need to run our ANOVA. ANOVA assumes a couple of things um, to be accurate. The first is that the variances across the groups are equal, uh, um, and we, we we can look at um, these variances and certainly see that numerically they're not equal. Um, but the, this is why you need a statistical test to test it. Are they different uh, apart from by chance? In order to do that we're going to use a statist statistical <coughs> test called Levine's test and that's available in the car package. The car package. I already have the car package so I'm just going to load it but um, if you haven't the same the same logic applies as for the previous package so I'm just going to say package dot car And within that, within within that package is a function called Levine test, uh, and the form the format that this function takes is uh, very similar to lots of functions. Um, and actually the ANOVA function we're going to be using in a bit too and actually the same logic as we did for the t-test so what we want to do is say put a dependent variable in first and then is predicted by which is that little tilde sign our, group, our grouping variable so let's demonstrate that so we're going to say we want to look at differences or we want to look at the variances for happiness But what we want you to test if is if there are different variances between the groups. So we're going to put that little tilde sign and say group. And we then want to give it the data that we want to use. So data equals. Data because that's what we called uh, data, and then I'm going to say you know, you don't have to do this. Either would be fine in this case, but the 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 this version of um, 
Levine's test is what's what's called robust, and and if if the assumptions of Levine's test are violated, it uses it uses the median instead of me, the mean. But most of the time, and certainly in this case, you want to use the mean. So I'm going to say centre. equals mean if we run that we see we get a Levine statistic of not 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 two so we have actually we have actually violated the assumption because it's less less than not point not five but I just I just wanted to um de de dem demonstrate it more more than anything, we can we can still forge ahead with the analysis. But if you were um, obviously doing this as a real analysis, you, you might want to be kind of aware of that because this is saying that these the, these variances are statistically um, different. There's a difference somewhere within them. So, um, but anyway, the next assumption we need to check is that the um, I'm the, the the variable so happiness within our groups follows a nice bell curve normal distribution um and because we want to do it between each groups we can use our friend the by function again so we say we want to look at happiness according to group but in, in this function we want to look at is the uh, Shapiro Wilk test of normality so we want to use the function Shapiro dot test and we see that in in all of our groups the assumption isn't violated so it supposedly follow follows a normal distribution. Uh, um you, you could you could all you could also look at histograms to establish normality but Based on that, we're going to say that all all our assumptions are met, and we can actually carry on with the ANOVA. So, you know, in order to do that, we um, it's actually the same layout as the the Levine's test function. So, uh, I'm just going to re repurpose that and use it again. We um, but instead, the uh, function we're going to use is called ANOVA. So Again, we want to use a formula. We want to say what what the thing we want to predict is essentially, and then what our factor is that we've 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 manipulated. And again, our data is called data. You don't you don't need this um, centre mean this time because that's not relevant. See, and over and because because we want um, there's several things that I never gives us, and we only want some of it. So I'm gonna st instead of I'll put it straight away. I'm going to store it and say summary equals and put it in a model object. So um, we can now run the summary function to out output that. And here are the results. So we see we do indeed have a very significant effect of 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 group um on happiness scores but we, we, um and in terms of reporting this effect we'd say uh, um the manipulation um significantly affected ha happiness scores and then report our test so we'd say f because ANOVA is an f test bracket and then our first degrees of freedom here in bracket are and then come at our second degrees of freedom, then report our f value and our p value, which in this case would be just less than 0.01. So that's great, but we don't. All this is telling us is, is that there's, there's a difference somewhere between the groups, but because you've got more than two groups in it, I know, but you don't, you don't know um, where those differences exist. So we need something called post hoc test that are going to split the split those apart but correct for the fact that we've done more than one test so we can still stay within our five percent error rate. In this case um when we've got when we've got 
um, inter independent groups with roughly equal variances when we should use something called the two keys honestly significant dif difference test and we, we to run that all we need to do is two key HSD um, and then give it our model object and this will do all possible comparisons uh, that you can do so the, the neglect correction versus the control condition was was significant the the impact bias versus the control condition wasn't significant so uh, um, and the neglect correction versus impact bias was significant so in reporting this I'd probably say oh, oh, all all sig comparisons were significant at p less than 0 0.01 apart from the um, impact bias versus control condition and I'd talk about that if our, if our variances hadn't been equal and, and we wanted to use something called bomb for only bomb for only correction which which is a lot more robust but is also less likely to find a significant effect we could use the pairwise dot t test function uh, um, that's 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 a little more complicated because it's like doing a t test with with some adjustment but um I'll talk about that in a future video anyway you've seen how to uh, do a simple between groups um and I'll, uh, analysis of variance in R and how, how how to test some of the assumptions we might not want to look at. Hope this hope the hope this video is useful in explain explaining the analysis and hope you learned something from it. Sub subscribe um to view more future videos. Thank you.